Okay, we got a lot of ground to cover, short time to get there, so I'm going to get right into it. First off, he's saying that I was watching him since 2006. Look, Yehuda, you need to get over yourself. I didn't know who you were in no 2006. I wasn't even on YouTube like that back then. The first time I came across your videos was about 2010. Okay, so he keep talking about this flyer. When Hank first brought them flyers into the class, he put them on the table, just like all the rest of the information. He didn't make no special announcement. The world didn't stop. Nothing happened. It was just like any other piece of information that would come in there. So I grabbed that and just put it in with whatever information I had. I might have taken a look at it, but it wasn't nothing so special and earth shattering that I needed to take note of it because Lonzi had information like that. He had uh, illustrations and depictions of Daniel 7 and all that. So we, you know, looked at it and there was some truth in it. So he's like, okay, so people just grabbed it as they wanted to. But as far as me remembering that that was you and I didn't even come back in contact with you until 2010 when you came into the bank, I didn't connect that dot because, like I said, I wasn't watching you back in 2006. I didn't know nothing about that. The first time I was watching Hebrew Israelites on YouTube was around 2009, 2010. Because people like uh, those guys from New York, GMS and all those people were putting stuff out there. Because at first I didn't even know people was uh, putting stuff on YouTube. So I started watching them and, you know, just looking at that. And then by the time I started doing research because I was trying to look for people who were non-Messianic. And then I think I came across your Christ video. But that was 2010. And then I said, I'm, I think I'm going to call that guy because he's in Chicago because I saw the number you put there. But then I never got around to it. And then shortly after that, around 2010, late 2010, early 2011, you came into the bank. So that's when I was like, oh, okay, that, that's this guy. And that's how I found out about you. And then when I uh, came to your house, it hadn't dawned on me yet because, like I said, that information that I had from, what, three, four years earlier... I, I didn't even know what I did with that. But then, the, I think the second time I came to your house, you gave me a bunch of them flies, and then I looked at them, I was like, oh, okay. And then I said, um, you know Hank, and, and all that. He's like, yeah. And that's when it dawned on me that you was the same guy that brought them flies in. So I always talking about some secret agent and all this stuff. Man, get out of here. You are a complete loser, man. You just coming up with stuff. Off the, I mean, this is ridiculous. Wasn't nobody trying to hide the fact that I got no stupid flyer from you, man. It is not that serious. Just like you talking about this book and the impregnable people, how you came across it at first, but then you didn't realize it was that same book. It's the same thing here. Them flyers came in there. I got one. That was it. And then later on, I ran into you. And then later, I connected the dot. And that was it. No big deal. Moving on to the next thing. Talking about this format issue with the... Uh, DVD or, or, or the CD let me explain something to you Yehuda because like I said you are a computer idiot so I was trying to be respectful and give you some options yeah I asked you because I wanted you to know what your options were it wasn't like I was asking you because I thought you were going to tell me something that uh, like a technical thing I wanted you to respond so that I could give you the options because there, I had two options I could either take the uh, the larger file, which was the uh, day and night debate, and put it on a group of CDs. Like, it would have been like three or four CDs I would have to break it up into. Or, I could just do it the easy way for me and put it on a, a media file. But, in order to do that, you have to extract it. And to confirm this, because I think Yeshea at the time was uh, the one helping you with this. Anybody, you can go ask him, how did he extract that file? Because you know Yehuda didn't do it. He sent it to him to do it. But I was trying to talk to Yehuda to find out uh, how he, if he could um, extract the file. Because I was trying to make it so that, you know, it was easy for him. Because when I was making the CD, I wanted to be able to put it on a file where he could just uh, extract it. Because if I had to do it in all those CDs, that would have been time consuming. So... Once he didn't respond, I just did it what was the easiest way for me. So he talking about, well, he still was able to do it. Yeah, because I did what was convenient for me. Now, had you gave me some correspondence, I would have made it easier for you because I would have took the uh, file 
and just broke it into some audio CDs where you could just put them in and play it from your CD player. That's what I was, would have done had you responded because it would have been easier for you. But that's to show you what type of uh, low-down skunk and rat you are. Somebody tries to help you and you blow it into something that ain't even that big of a deal. Taking mountains and making them out of molehills. On to the next thing. Now he's still talking about Exodus 12 and 22, but let's deal with that real quick because he still has not answered the question um, how did the people know when they were supposed to come out? If we look at Exodus 22, it says, And ye shall take the bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, strike it, um, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. So again, this is a definitive time. If he still talks about that this is supposed to be early, then how could that be communicated to the people? Okay, don't come out early. Okay, what time is that? Because how would they know, in all these different households, how would they have known when to come out? Huh? When would they know that this was okay to come out? Unless they had a definitive time or time uh, of a day, like a morning or afternoon, whatever. See, what you're saying doesn't make sense. And that's the reason why you're doing all this dancing and you're still not dealing with the direct point. It does... It, this is really straightforward. It says morning, that's what it is. But we're going to deal with these other uh, points that you call yourself making as well. Because it doesn't make sense what you're saying. Now, another thing that he pointed out was dealing with this unleavened bread. And he's saying that the uh, Feast of Unleavened Bread was, or the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread are the same thing. Now, here's the thing. If we go to Deuteronomy, the 16th chapter, okay, and if we look at the fourth verse, it's telling you right here, it says, And there shall be no leavened bread seen with thee in all thy coast seven days, neither shall there anything of the flesh, talking about the Passover, which thou sacrifices the first day at even, remain all night until the morning. So wait a minute. They were eating bread with the Passover as part of the Passover meal. There was unleavened bread and the bitter herbs that was eaten with the Passover. But when it came to the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that Passover lamb wasn't nowhere around. It wasn't supposed to even be consumed with that Feast of Unleavened Bread. So how could they be eating the uh, or celebrating the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which everywhere you go, you see it was on the morrow, right? He still ain't dealt with Exodus um, uh, numbers 33 and 3, right? He keeps screwing that over. But the point is, there was not supposed to be any of that Passover lamb left with that, um, to be eaten with that piece of leavened bread. Okay. Now, another thing is that he still has not explained how all these people were able to come out before morning Okay, and after they cooked the lamb, because you know it took a couple of hours to cook the lamb, because like at sundown or at dusk is when they had to kill it, right? So if they had to kill it, it takes time to cook it, right? So after they cook it, so if it's dusk around seven o'clock, and then they still got to cook the lamb, we're talking a couple of hours into the night anyway. So after they do that, as the scriptures tell you, they have to rise up. Because it was time to go to bed. That's why the scriptures explicitly say that it was midnight when the Most High came through there. Okay, so how do you explain how they were able to do all of this in a moment's time? How you try to make it seem like this was happening within a couple of minutes when the lamb itself took hours to cook. And them people didn't know exactly when that deaf angel was coming through there. They didn't know. So you think they were just sitting around twiddling their thumbs waiting after they ate the lamb? No. It's t the scriptures are clearly telling you they could not leave out until the morning. And like I said, I already broke it down how the thing unfolded throughout the night. But you acting like time stands still or something. It's, it's totally ridiculous. But you have yet to explain how that works. And the other thing is that you said that the, um, the people left Egypt 
And I'm going to just bust this out real quick because this, this is very simple. I can't believe that this guy is going to sit here and, and, and make it seem like, uh, you know, these people came out when the scriptures are even telling you. Let me pull it up real quick. Is telling you where the people went. And last time I showed the map, I'm not even going to show it because he ain't even worth that. But I'm going to just pull up what the scripture says. Since he, he don't want to deal with it anyway. But I'm going to show you what it says. And you guys go get your own map and look this up. Okay, because I want you to see what, he's, what he did. Now, verse 37, it said, And the children of Israel journey from Ramses to Sukkot. Now go get your map. And look at where Ramesses and Sukkoth is. You'll see it in the land of Goshen. And it goes from Ramesses to Sukkoth. That is still firmly in Egypt. But yet he keeps saying, well, they all came out of the suburbs and then they went into the wilderness. This is telling you how far they got. Those people could not have got from Ramesses to the wilderness. Go get a map and look at it. A map of Egypt. Egypt is not a small country. Okay. Especially back then, they didn't have motorized transportation, so they had to go on foot. So they walked from there. They had their whole families were whole caravans. Those people only got as far as Sukkot. They were still firmly in Egypt. And like I said, he still didn't disprove my analogy about the woman leaving uh, the house with the child. And the father could say, well, she took so-and-so home. Because she was in the process of taking them home. That's all that means. And these people were in the process of leaving Egypt. It doesn't mean they left Egypt because they did not leave Egypt. He is totally adding to the word when he says that. And the scripture right here, verse 37, is telling you they were not out of Egypt yet. It's telling you how far they went. So that that's elementary right there. I, I don't even know what else to say about that. He, you know, he just totally added to the word. And the other thing you want to look at is that Egypt can be synonymous with bondage. So when it says they left Egypt, you can interpret it as they were free from bondage because that's what actually happened. When the Mosai went in there and killed the firstborn man and beast, he freed his people. And that what is what initiated the process for them to be able to come out. It wasn't that they were already uh, coming out of the, the entire land of Egypt. That's ridiculous. That's what it means. That's how you want to view that. But let's deal with another thing. Um, like I said in the last address that I made, well, not the, the, the one before where I uh, dealt with Uremia, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, Yehuda, because you want to keep pressing this point about um, the 14th day is the uh, same or the 14th day at even is the 15th day. Okay, let, let's do this. We gonna, we gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something very convenient for you. I'm, I'm going to make this very simple. I'm going to concede something. Okay, we're going to go to Exodus 12 and 18. And it says, so I, I'm going to accept that the 14th day of the month at even is the 15th day. So after all these years, I'm going to go ahead and accept that. So let's see where, where that takes us. So if, I'm, if I read the 18th verse, it says in the first month on the 14th day of the month at even, since you always want to point that out, at even, and we look up even, what do we see? Okay, we see Ereb, we see dusk, okay? And it says, ye shall eat eleven bread until the one and twentieth day of the month at even. Okay, same word. So, Yehuda, if I accept that the fourteenth day of the month at even is the fifteenth day, then how the hell is the twenty-first day not the twenty-second day? So now you're still dealing with eight days. Because you're, according to you, fourteen and even is the trigger to make it the 15th day. So therefore, the 21st day has to be the 22nd. I mean, come on, people. What am I, what am I missing here? How is that not the case? 
So I want you to deal with that, Yehuda. How is that not the 22nd day? Okay? Oh, and another thing. When it came to that uh, point that I made dealing with the sanitation when the people had to leave, look what this joker did. He did is completely adding all kind of stuff that's not even there. When it, he, he gonna talk about this, uh, talking about a, a, a chamber pot. Where is there? Where is chamber pot mentioned in the scripture? The Most High wouldn't have gave, given us this precept if those people were dealing with chamber pots. He gave them a precept to leave the camp, and then he's gonna say, "Well, this was the army. There was no army per se. These people, each everybody that was of a certain age." could fight. It was no conscripted army or some separate unit. And then what? how he broke it down with didn't make no sense. I was trying to make sense of what he was saying and it made no sense. He's saying like the like there was some uh, 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 army unit somewhere and this uh, that, that we're going to read here was only applying to them when the scripture don't say that at all. But we're going to read it real quick. And it's going to uh, read in the... Uh, 12th verse, he said, Thou shalt have a place also without the camp, whether thou shalt go forth abroad. Now, he's not singling out no army here. This was a general rule for everybody. And thou shalt have a paddle upon thy weapon, because all our people had weapons, okay? This was the ancient world, very hostile time. You know, it wasn't no army per se. Everybody could fight that was of a fighting age. And it shall be, when thou wilt ease thyself abroad, thou shalt dig therewith. And thou shalt turn back and cover that which cometh from thee. Now, this is a general rule for everybody. And that's why he says in the 14th verse, For Yahuwah thy Elohim walketh in the midst of thy camp to deliver thee and to give up thy enemies before thee. Therefore shall thy camp be holy, and that he see no unclean thing in thee and turn away from thee. Now, this was everybody. And he's going to talk about some chamber pot. This ain't even in the scripture. If there was a, a protocol for a chamber pot, the most I would have mentioned that. But he gave them a protocol for them to leave their camp when they had to go to the washroom. So, totally adding to the book. Now, another thing I want to point out here is that Yehuda, he want to sit here and just disparage people. And he acting like by people working jobs, he want to try to throw out calling people agents and all that. Look, who a bigger agent than you? You are an ex-drug dealer. Okay? If somebody working from a, in a bank and all that, helping people, doing what I did, how am I an agent and you the one sitting up here selling poison to people? You are a bum. You, all you do is sit on the internet, gossip, talk about people. You are a 66-year-old bum. You're still living with your mama, talking about that's y'all building. Now, that's her building. And you leeching off of her and you leeching off your, your wife, uh, social security check, whatever she get. You are a loser and a bum. You're intellectually lazy and you're physically lazy. And that's why he's talking about, well, he don't like computers. And, uh, and back in the 70s, he's talking about some job he used to have and he didn't like computers. Yeah, yeah, you didn't like them because you was a bum then. You didn't want to do nothing. Just like you talked about your daddy left you because he didn't want to work. And you would chip off the old block. You don't want to do it. And that's why you sit around making these false prophecies that ain't coming true. Adding and diminishing everything. Because you don't want to do nothing. You don't want to do the heavy lifting. I probably have done more work in building stuff. Or in setting up a business. Or doing different things in the past five years. Than this nigga. And yeah, I got to call him a nigga. Because that's how he acting. Than he did in the last 35 years. And I'm willing to verify that. He's a bum. And that's why he's just sitting here just coming up with all this stuff. And that's why his rusty, dusty, crusty butt is still in Chicago. How is it working out for you, Yehuda? How is the land working out for you? Huh? How is that looking for you? You sitting your butt where, right where you are, right where I said you uh, where you would be. Huh? Talking all this garbage. And, and, and the other thing, he's talking about the kings of the earth coming to get him. Look, why would the kings of the earth come and get you when you are a bit, you've been exposed? And this would go out to the kings of the earth, whoever you may be. Don't even deal with him. There's other Israelites who are really about the book. So if you want to come get uh, those of us who are really about it, then you deal with us. Don't deal with this clown. 
So now, Yehuda, now what? So your kings of the earth, the ones you keep pandering for, sending out your little flimsy flyers to, and that's supposed to make, just because he uh, did all this little weak stuff, now all of a sudden he thinks that that's who he's supposed to be. Look, you the one adding to the work, not me. And the other thing is, um, you are the same person that want to sit here and criticize people for doing uh, things that you're the one that you're doing it. Like, I want to point out something to you guys. He keeps bringing up little words like if you say certain things, then he tried to find fault uh, with it. Okay? And I'm going to show you the uh, scripture where it talks about making a man an offender for a word. If we go to uh, Isaiah 29 and 21. Okay, I'm going to start at the 20th verse. It says, For the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Now, every time I say a little word or something, he try to jump on that. Like, I call people students. Since when is somebody being a student a pejorative? Since when is that something bad? We've all been students. Okay? Whether you've been in school or even classes, Bible classes. So he just try to jump on little words to try to make... Uh, it negative. And that's what the scriptures are talking about right here. 21st verse. That make a man an offender for a word. That's him. And lay a snare for him that reprove it. So that's what I was doing. I was reproving him. So he trying to lay snares for me. But it ain't going to work. Because he going to fall in the holes that he's trying to dig. In the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. And that's what he's doing. His whole movement and all that garbage he coming up with is a thing of naught. And when people tried to warn him like I did five years ago, which if he listened to me, he wouldn't be looking as bad as he do. He ain't admitting that. He can't even admit I was right about that, right? And that's clear for everybody to see. No matter what he says, he can't deny that. I was right. I told you not to do that. And if he had to listen to me and walk some of his back, he wouldn't be looking like the total moron that he is now. But anyway, I want to show y'all that to show you what he is and now again i know some of you people you want to believe and and i get it you know you you're being oppressed and you and somebody coming along this snake oil salesman and he telling you what you want to hear but you gotta understand something the most high is in control of this and it doesn't matter about any of us yeah he any of us could be the seed of david i'm not running around saying it like him he trying to accuse me of being arrogant and all that. What I say is predicated on the scripture. I'm not putting no pins, ribbons on myself. I tell you that in a minute. I'm not trying to say I'm the seed of David. I'm not trying to tell you I'm the governor. I'm not trying to tell you that I'm the one that's going to lead a movement back to the land at, at a such and such a time. That's you. But you keep projecting everything. So for you people that is hoping for this, I understand. But you got to trust in the most high, not this idiot. Some of our best men, like Solomon, that were, now he was a direct seed of David. Solomon had it all. But what happened? He wound up falling off. Why? Because he went away from the Most High. He, he, he violated the laws of the Creator. So this low down degenerate, Yehuda, who is he? Of course he could fall off. And that's what he did. And I'm just pointing it out. I'm not happy to see nobody fall, but I got to call it out. Now, Let's look at another thing. The first thing we want to look at is the fact that um, he, he's also talking about uh, Elisha. Talking about he's my mentor. Elisha wasn't my mentor. I disagree with him on stuff just like I disagree with you. Unlike you, I'm willing to learn from other people. That don't make them my mentor. Now, I agree with some things he said. I disagree with some things he said. But you going around talking about the man... And you keep talking about the worm ate him up and all that. But guess what? Elisha was in his 70s when he died. He made it to his three score and 10. You see if you make it to yours before you start running your mouth talking about people like that. So yeah, the most high took him just like he can take any one of us. So what? But why are you trying to disparage the man? Okay? He he died. You know, it looked like he lived a full life to me. So you make it, you 60-some you, uh, years old, you get up to your 70s and see how well you're doing. Okay, but I just wanted to throw that out there because he always finds a way to, to throw some uh, salt at something to show what kind of degenerate he is. He ain't nothing but like a low-down 
stinking skunk or, or snail with, with, with this trail of, of, of slime behind him, and then he trying to accuse somebody else. See, you, you're just a disgusting person, man. Now, another thing I want to point out is the fact that he talked about this hallelujah. Look, I pointed this out before, but I'm going to break it down again. When it comes to, the, when you say uh, hallelujah, the Most High only has one name. As I said before, yod Hey wah Hey. You can pronounce it in different ways, and that's why there's discrepancies. I believe it's Yahuwah. Other people say Yahweh, Yahweh, whatever. But one thing that is clear and undeniable is that the yod Hey wah Hey is not just Yah. Like him. He's the only idiot running around taking the tetragrammaton and sticking it on another person's name. You don't do that. That is stupid. The name Yahuda, and I told you this before, is yod He wa dalit He. That's it. Okay? It has nothing to do with you taking the whole tetragrammaton and adding it to it. That's totally backwards. And when you go into the concordance, you see two different numbers for Yah, which is 3050, and then for uh, Yah, uh, Yahuwah, you see 3068. That's what you're going to see. You're not going to see anywhere in the scriptures where somebody has the name of the Most High and their name. The Most High's name only belongs to him. Okay? So that's the reason why in certain names that you are mentioning, you, you can use part of the name. You can use the contracted form. And so just like if you say a common phrase like uh, hallelujah, that's why I still say it. But that does not mean I'm saying that uh, he has two names. Let me give you an example. I'm going to show you what he's saying, how, how it's ridiculous. Now, just say, for example, you take somebody's name uh, like Jonathan, Yohanathan, right? Now... Sometimes that person might be called John, or even you can use my name, David. Sometimes people might say Dave, right? Now, Yehuda, what he's trying to sell you on is that uh, the, if you call somebody John, like if he's standing around and they, there's a guy that he's talking to, and he calls him John, and then another person runs up and says, hey, Jonathan, how you doing? Yehuda look up, hey, I thought your name was John. What? what? It's the same name. I, you know, this person can call me John, this person calls me Jonathan. But that don't change the fact that my name is Jonathan. It's just a contracted form. But another idiotic thing he says is that the Wa doesn't have any sound. That's what he says. Now, to show you how stupid that is, we're going to pour up the Hebrew and... See, he, he can't give you this level of scholarship because, number one, he keeps trying to dis dismiss Hebrew, talking about where well, this Hebrew Edomite. Well, guess what? Everything's a bastardized language. Language still has rules, but he's, he's trying to dis dismiss it, but at the same time, he's trying to act like, uh, you know, the rules don't apply. So, because he's coming to add his own rules to it. But when we look at Wa, which is right here, we can see... That it no, not only has a phonetic, it has a pictographical meaning, and it has a numeric meaning. That's why. Okay? It has a sound to it. It has a sound. Why? He's coming around here talking about it doesn't have a sound. And even in the ancient world, this is a coin dating back to our people's captivity in Persia. See, he don't bring you stuff like this. He can't do that because he's lazy. He's intellectually lazy. Look at this coin. And it dates back, as I said, to the Persian kingdom. You got what? Yo, he, wa. And, they, and that said, Yahoo. So that's why one of the reasons I call the Most High Yahoo wa is because you got to account for that Yahoo, that ooh. It's there. When you add that wah, it's there. And by him saying it doesn't have a sound, that's just like somebody telling you in the alphabet that the letter U doesn't have a sound. So any word that has a U, like umbrella, or a word that has, like house, he tells you it's silent. So instead of house, he's telling you it should be hose. That's the type of nonsense he's saying. 
He's giving you, he's taking one of the letters from the Hebrew alphabet and telling you it doesn't have a sound, which, which it does. And like I said, his name, it even shows up in his name. That's why he calls himself Yahuda. So Yahuda, if, it, if the Wa doesn't have a sound, then why ain't you calling yourself Yada? I asked you that on round three of the, what I dropped exactly one year ago. Why don't you stop calling yourself Yahuda? Because every time you say Yahuda, you're using the Wa. I mean, this stuff is elementary, people. But this is the type of idiocy he comes up with because he don't know what he's talking about. Okay? Now, I'm going to deal with some other things real quick before I wrap this up. I'm going to deal with the fact that this guy is just telling these false prophecies. Okay? And when you're telling false prophecies, there's consequences to it. So it ain't that I'm just trying to come down on them because I got a problem with them. I'm bringing you scriptures, people. It says, and we, we, we all know this one, uh, Deuteronomy 18. Okay? So I'm going to get it right down to the point. It says, It shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or shall speak in the name of other gods. Even that prophet shall die. Okay? That's the law from the Most High. And like I said before, that's precisely what you did. Verse 21. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which Yahuwah has not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of Yahuwah. Didn't he do that? Or you can say Yahweh, whoever, whatever you want to say. But here, when we look it up. Guess what? It's the full tetragrammaton, 3068, not 3050. Okay, that's one thing. But even if you want to claim it's, it's Yah there, okay, whatever. But this is from the Most High. And what did he say? When you speak a word in his name, didn't you do that? If the things follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which Yahuwah had not spoken. So you have been lying in his name. But the prophet has been presumptuously. That's what you do. You speak presumptuous, presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. And that's why I said, I'm not afraid of you or nobody else that sits here and lies on the most high word. And I stand 100% behind what I said. If I have something to do with it, you ain't going in the land. And I'm not saying that because I think I'm big and bad and mighty. I'm saying that predicated on what this says in the scriptures. And I'm going to get right to that point. You can read it in Ezekiel 13, but there's multiple precepts on this. But I'm going to hit you with this one right quick. I, ain't, I don't just talk like what you do. I, I, when I say something, it's predicated on Scripture. Okay, so the Most High is going in on these false prophets like you. And th look at what he say. Um, I'm going to get right down to, let me see what I want. I, could, I would read this whole thing, but I know I ain't got as much time as I would want. But I'm going I'm to still take care of this now. Let's look at the 10th verse. He said, because even because that they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace. Okay, that's one thing he always talking about. We're talking about he's just about peace. Well, we all want peace, but sometimes you got to be prepared to battle. And I love peace and I want to be uh, alive to seek peace on this earth. But if the most High caused me to do something. To help bring in that peace, I'm willing to go to war for peace. That's how much I love it. But he's sitting up there talking about he all about peace and all that. Listen, man, what kind of man is you? So if somebody run up in your house and try to attack you and your wife, what you going to tell them? I'm about peace? No. You supposed to be a man to stand up. But like I said, I'm going to get into that a little bit later. How he got some really funny ways going on. But we're going to talk about that. But the thing is, uh, the most high... Is telling you, I'm gonna, actually I'm going to go up a little bit. He's telling you about these false prophets. He says, I'll start at 7. He said, have you not seen a vain vision? Which is what Yehuda had, vain vision. Have you not spoken a lying definition? Whereas ye say, Yehuda said, albeit I have not spoken. So anytime you include the Most High name in something like this, you are including him in a lie. You're lying on the Creator. Therefore, thus said Yahuwah Elohim, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, said Yahuwah Elohim, and my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither 
shall be they be written in the writings of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am Yahuwah, Elohim. Now, that's where I'm predicating what I said on. The most I don't even have to use me. I just know that that's going to come to pass for false prophets like you. It don't have to be me doing it, but I know it's going to happen. And I said, and I say it again, if I got something to do with it, you ain't going in the land. And I predicated it on scripture. Now you deal with that. Now, another thing I'm going to deal with to show you how off this guy is, because he always running around talking about what well, he a 50C3 and all that. Well, guess what? You're a creature of the state. How are you going to share the Most High's glory with the state? See, that's why when you look at this logo, he got Illinois in there. He got the Most High name all to the side, but he got Illinois right side up. And I pointed out because that shows you where his, the allegiance of this organization is. The Most High ain't told you to set up no 501c3. That makes you a ward of the state. That You, you submit to the authority of the state. And I'm going to prove that right now. It says in the landmark case, Hale vs. Henkel, 2001 U.S. 43 at 74, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court stated the following regarding corporations. Upon the other hand, the corporation is a creature of the state. It is presumed to be incorporated for the benefit of the public. It receives certain privileges, like the tax privileges, because like I said, he's a bum. He's just trying to find a way to save some money. And franchises and holds them subject to the laws of the state and the limitations of its charter. Its powers are limited. By law, it can make no contract not authorized by its charter. So, that is the limit of his authority when it comes to uh, being a ward of the state. So, how do you share the Most High's glory? He said he ain't sharing the, his glory with nobody. So, what you going to do? Take this logo into the land? You see how ridiculous that is, people? How is he going to go on the land with Illinois on his logo? <laughs> this is stupid. That's why you don't see that on our logo. You don't see no Illinois on on this logo. And you ain't going to see it. Why? Because this ain't beholden to no state. Setting up a 501c3 because, like I said, he, he's, he's a loser and he's just trying to do a little hustle. That's all that is. Now, I want to deal with this real quick. Now, y'all notice he's been out here talking about I'm bothering him and talking about him when, remember, I came out here to respond to him because he had been talking about me the whole time. And I'm going to prove it right now. This is going to be the nail in the coffin to show that everything he's been saying is totally invalid because all this could have been avoided if he wasn't out here running his mouth about me. This man has been obsessed with me for years. I wasn't nowhere around him. I'm going to play you... Uh, some audio of what he said. Now listen, I was nowhere around this guy. And listen to what he was saying right here. Now this uh, video, you could pull it up. It was from about July, I believe, of 2015. And the only reason why I knew about this is because I wanted to see, because like I said, I hadn't been dealing with him. I wasn't thinking about him or nothing. But I remembered him saying that he was going to be back in the land before 2016. And so... I said, well, let me look up this guy and see what's going on with that. So that's when I started looking. I think I found out about this video about uh, September. And that's why a couple months later, I dropped what I did back in November of last year. But this is what this fool was saying uh, about me way before I even came on YouTube. But yet, he want to twist it like I've been talking about him. But just listen to this. So wait a minute. So he's admitting he hadn't heard from me. So why is he talking about me? So let me ask any man out there. If another man wasn't talking to you, why would you come on YouTube and still be bringing this man up? But this 60-something-year-old man still is talking about another man that he's going to admit in a minute that I didn't want to have nothing to do with him. And he was right. Now, at first, I tried to talk to him because, you know, I didn't want to hold no grudges or nothing. But when this fool... I saw how he really was. I said, forget it. I don't want to deal with him no more. And I told him that. And then that's why he got all uh, butt hurt and twisted out of shape because I didn't want to deal with him. Like I said, he act really uh, kind of funny, but we're we going to deal with that. You 
So wait a minute. He's, he's talking about I didn't want to talk to him. Well, as a man, if you think I don't want to talk about or talk to you, then why are you still talking about me? That sounds kind of sissified to me. That sounds kind of punkified to me. Because if it's me and some dude don't want to deal with me, guess what? I ain't going to be talking about it. So you guys, tell me if I'm wrong. Now, how does that make sense? That I don't want to have nothing to do with him, but he's still out here talking about me. Just listen. I'm going to play a, a couple other things here. See, he was holding a grudge because he was mad because I wouldn't call him and all that. It was like, listen, man, I ain't had time for that, but just listen to this. See, see, he holding a grudge. See, he ain't gonna come to his door when I came over there to try to be a man and just, you know, shake it off or do whatever. He ain't want to do that, so he acting like a female. And I ain't trying to offend women, but women, you guys are emotional, and you should be. That's good. That's that balance. But shouldn't no grown, rusty, dusty, crusty old man be acting like this? He act really punkified to me. And at first, I couldn't figure it out, but I'm wondering why is this guy still talking about me? And then he trying to twist it. When I wasn't even thinking about this guy, other than to find out why he wasn't in the land. And because, like I said, I wasn't listening to him because I didn't know he had switched up in 2013 to, to kick it down to September. I didn't know he did that. But I was just listening for uh, whether or not he had an excuse as to why he wasn't in the land. And then all of a sudden, I found out he's still running his mouth about me. So, again, men out there, what do you think of that? How am I supposed to do that? I mean, logically, if you know, if we ain't talked in years, why am I still a topic of conversation for you? We had what we had, and that was it. I was gone. I wasn't nowhere near you. And you still out here on the internet talking about me, but yet and still, I'm messing with him. Now, y'all figure that out and tell me what's going on, because I have no idea. This guy sitting up here talking about somebody as an agent because I worked at a bank. Okay, well, let me tell you something, Yehuda. I thank the Most High that I was able to work in the fields that I did. So I worked in the financial field for almost 20 years. And I used my position to actually help our people. Yeah, so if I saw a young man coming to my bank, young brother, and I saw that he was trying to get a loan or something to try to set up his business or do things or some sister that wanted to get a loan for her business, I was trying to, I would go to bat for him. Okay, helping them if somebody died, dealing with wheels and all that. That's the type of stuff I did because I was able to sleep at night for helping people. But let me ask you something. Look at the career that you had. When you was out here pushing poison to our people, when that young man came to you after he got through breaking into somebody's house to come get that heroin or that crack from you, how did you sleep at night, huh? How did you sleep at night when that woman, after she got through turning tricks to come get them drugs that you was pushing, as, instead of feeding her family, she came to you to get them drugs, and you gladly took that money. But yet, I'm the Asian, right? So I work in the But you out there pushing poison to our people. Get out of here with that, man. You are a loser and a bum. And like I said, I'm done with you. I don't want... I, this, I only did this real quick. I mean, I know, you know, took a little bit of time for me to unwind some of this foolishness, but I just wanted to let y'all know this is it. I'm not dealing with him no more. I don't have nothing else to say to him. I said what I said, and if the most I let things go the way they go, then that's what it's going to be. But as far as I'm concerned, he's old news. I don't want to have nothing else to do with him. I didn't want to have nothing to do with him back then. He knew it. He felt butthurt about it because, like I said, it took me a while to figure it out. But he has punkified, sissified ways, and that's why he came out with all this stuff still talking about me years after the fact. Because this man is sissified. There's something wrong with him. He ain't acting like a man. He's a bum and a loser, and that's all he's ever going to be. And I ain't got nothing else to say. But I want you guys to just stick with the Most High. Stick with uh, following the law, statute, judgment, and commandments. And whoever the Most High has selected to be in this remnant... That's who it's going to be. But 
that's it. So I wish y'all the best, and I'm done with this food.